you want to do declaration and initialization for arrays in the same line, this is Daniel and you are going to get coded. Here I have Visual Studio opened and I'm going to create a simple console application. So file, new and project. And then under Visual C Sharp, Windows Desktop and console app, I'm going to name this array initializers, initializers and hit OK. While this is loading, I have here a link opened. Uh, you can also find this link in the description down below. So we can declare, assign and initialize the array at once to avoid writing assignments as separate operations. This is where the object initializer shines. As you can see here, we have a declaration and also we initialize the array with some values and we can do this in one line. Well, these are two lines because I zoomed in. If I zoom out a little bit, you can see that it's only one line. So in one line, we do declaration and initialization. So we basically put some values in that array. Let me try to zoom back. And Visual Studio is done as well. Let me try to pull it here and let's begin. So string and square brackets and then fruits, new string square brackets and four. And then we are going to put four values. So apple, cherry, pineapple, and plum. Cool. Let's continue. So we can also leave out the size because the compiler is smart enough to infer or to know that. So you can see right now here we have four. Which, specify, uh, which specifies the size. And here we removed it. So let's try to do the same. And you can see that we have no error. So it's perfectly fine. Other approaches. Well, this intelligence of the compiler can lead us to other places as well. Because the compiler can infer many things, we can simplify the way we create arrays. So let's see those approaches. The first one, we can leave out the type, in our case string. As you can see here, I have new and square brackets and here I have the string. So let's try to leave out string and see if we get error and we don't get any error. So we can do that if you want. We can also leave out the new and square brackets altogether. So we can just remove these and this also works. Or we can make use of the var keyword but in this case, we need to specify the new and the square uh, brackets part. So if we replace this with var, you can see that we have an error. So the compiler cannot infer, cannot know what is the type of the fruits variable. So we need to specify at least this part. So new and square brackets to denote that we are talking about an array here. Okay. This is called an implicitly typed array because its type is inferred based on the assignment. So this part over here, okay, this whole part. They are great for object initializers and anonymous types. I'm going to cover anonymous types in a future episode as well. Why do we still need the new and square brackets part? So this one here. The second approach works because on the left side, of the declaration, we defined the type, in that case, string and square brackets. So let's scroll up to the second approach. And you can see here, we don't have new and square brackets anymore. And we have here string and square brackets. Well, this works here and we can remove that because we defined the type on the left side of the declaration. But here, because we use var, we need to specify at least on one side what type we are talking about. So that's why we need here new and square brackets because we use var on the left side. So if you use var as I said there is no way for the compiler to know what is the type of the initialization so we need that. So choices which one to use? I recommend using the third option 
because it uses the var keyword and it makes writing code faster. So this one over here. In addition, if you want to emphasize that those are indeed strings, you can specify that with the new string square brackets. So you can add string over here. It's up to you how much clarity you want to convey in your code. And this is the whole idea. You write code, but other developers read your code. So you need to write code ha uh, and um, being concerned about the readability of your code because other people will come into your code and they need to understand what you wrote. Let's display the values with a for each loop. So let's do that. I will try to type for each and then tab, tab. I will leave var instead of item, I will type fruit and I'm going to iterate in fruits. And let's try to display that CW tab and I'm going to insert fruit here. And also I will try to keep the console opened so that we can read the results. So let's try to press start and see the actual uh, fruits from our array. This is building and you can see that we have apple, cherry, pineapple and plum. So all the fruits from here. Okay, so no problem. So this is how you initialize arrays in C-sharp. I'll continue with methods. So that will be in a future episode as well. If you, help, if you find this helpful, please click thumbs up. Also, my goal right now, as you may know, is to have 1000 subscribers so that I can start making Q&A videos. So also write your questions down below so that I can put them in those Q&A videos. Until next time, bye guys.